How much energy does AI use? The energy consumption of AI, particularly for large-scale models like those used in natural language processing, NLP, and uh, machine learning, ML machines, is substantial and compared to energy-intensive industries like crypto mining. Oh yeah, we're going there. Because AI is an absolute dystopian nightmare, and not for the reason that Terminator made us think. Okay, not just for that. Hi everyone, I'm Amber from Sustainable Jungle, where we share sustainability tips, tricks, hacks, products, brands, and stories to better our planet. And today, I'm here to give you the rundown on these little robots that now live in our pockets, ready to answer and serve our every whim. Which sounds great and all, until you consider all the people who have lost jobs and the industries that have died because of it. And that's just the most obvious concern with AI. It's not even to speak about the more pressing question that I'm here to chat GPT with you about today. And that's, is AI sustainable? Spoiler, as with most things that make our lives easy and convenient, not so much. Artificial intelligence may seem like a hyper-efficient solution, but that's really only from a labor standpoint. The real truth is that AI uses a ton of resources, metal to build the servers, electricity to run them, and water to cool them. And yes, I know, I used a ChatGPT query in the intro of this video, but that was just to emphasize a point, and I wanted to see what it said, and I swear that that is the only thing I queried when making this video, because you know what? I'm kind of a fan of putting in the work and doing old-fashioned research over trusting robots to get it right. So. Let's dive in, but first, please take just one second to like this video and subscribe to our channel down there if you haven't already so you can stay in the know on lots of other sustainability content just like this. Now, people have been talking about AI for decades, really since Terminator came out. Trust me. And then all of our Skynet fears were realized in November of 2022 when ChatGPT rolled out its first iteration to the masses. And then it feels like practically overnight, AI took over the world. Just two years later, and we are now four ChatGPT models later, and we have AI functionality infused with pretty much every search engine and social media site that we use. We can hardly go anywhere on the internet without being inundated by AI-generated images that scream uncanny valley. Its rise has just been as as fast and furious as we feared, and this insane increase in demand means an equally insane demand in the thing needed to run these AI engines and supercomputers. And that's energy. And boy, is AI hungry for it. The amount of computational power used for AI is doubling roughly every 100 days. That's pretty wild to think about. Now, you may be thinking, oh, but isn't crypto the big bad wolf of energy consumption? And that is true. Bitcoin mining notoriously is really terrible for the planet, and it's estimated that Bitcoin mining alone uses more electricity annually than entire countries like Argentina. But Here's the kicker. Large-scale AI training is starting to give crypto mining a run for its virtual money. Their algorithms are getting more and more complex, and the bigger they are, the more energy they need. According to Jesse Dodge, a senior research analyst at the Allen Institute for AI, just one query to ChatGPT uses about as much energy as could light one light bulb for about 20 minutes. Okay, you say, well, all search engines take energy. Well, we know that. Yes. But one ChatGPT query needs 10 times as much electricity as a regular Google search engine query. So remember when ChatGPT really went viral and everyone was on there asking it stupid stuff or trying to break it or make it say something wrong? Well, just keep that in mind that while you're hopping on the latest Instagram add yours story trend and asking chatbots to roast your feed, it's also roasting the planet because of it. And that's just one query. Now think about the scale of AI. How many people are using it? How many queries they're issuing a day? Now, as of this month that I'm filming this, October 2024, ChatGPT has over 200 million weekly active users. That's up from just 100 million only one year ago. And currently, there are more than 7,000 data centers worldwide, which is up from 3,600 in just 2015. In 2023, the International Energy Agency estimated that these data centers already accounted for 1 to 1.5% of global electricity use and around 1% of the world's energy-related CO2 emissions. Now, for comparison, in 2022, global aviation accounted for 2% of energy-related CO2 emissions. But wait, it gets worse. They estimate that data centers' total electricity consumption could double from 2022 levels to 1,000 terawatt hours in 2026, which, by the way, is the same as the entire country of Japan and electricity demand. You know, the country that has Tokyo, the single biggest and most populated metro area in the world. Yeah, AI uses as much energy as that. 
and AI will result in data centers using 4.5% of global energy by 2030 if we stay on this track. AI's energy demands have ramped up so exponentially fast that a lot of plans that we had to decommission several coal plants have actually been delayed in order to provide power to run them. About 1300 megawatt hours of electricity, which is the equivalent to powering 130 US average homes for a year, is what it takes to chain chat GPT alone. And we don't have specific numbers for this published really, but it's said that chat GPT, the current iteration, uses 50 times more in its training. Now, obviously, as we've already noted, with energy use comes emissions. And according to a 2019 study from the University of Massachusetts Amherst, training just a single large-scale AI model can emit over 626,000 pounds of CO2. That's the same as five entire lifespans of the average passenger car. And as bad as that sounds, the day-to-day -day emissions associated with using AI actually far exceed the emissions from training it now at this point. Because AI models get trained just once, and then they can be used billions of times. At the present, training is responsible for about 20% of emissions, and usage is responsible for the other 80%. It's also worth noting the differences between generating different types of content. So generating AI images uses obviously way more energy than just generating AI text. So to look at that, generating a thousand images with a powerful model like Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, or Dolly, that's going to be responsible for about as much carbon dioxide as driving the equivalence of 4.1 miles in an average gasoline powered car. Now, that might not sound like a lot considering that's a thousand images, but Let's look at it a little bit more broadly. When you consider that 34 million images are generated per day with over 15 billion images created using text to image algorithms between 2022 and 2023, well, suddenly that's a whole lot of miles driving. All those AI art accounts now flooding social media platforms, which as an artist hurts my soul on a completely different level because I hand embroider things and now people are making AI photos of embroidery hoops as if it's not an actual process that takes over a hundred hours sometimes. But tangential rant over, the point is not only are those hurting artists, but they are using a tremendous amount of energy every time you see those. And AI isn't just hungry, it's also thirsty. Now, as anyone who has once downloaded 20 songs at once on LimeWare on the family desktop PC back in 2005 can tell you, computers can generate a lot of heat. Now think about the heat of all those servers generating those AI prompts and trying to answer millions of things at the same time. It's gonna mean that these data centers need large amounts of water and air conditioning to cool those servers. Specifically, they need about 7,100 liters of water for each megawatt hour of energy they consume. So every prompt given is basically like pouring 16 ounces of water right on the ground. According to Google's latest sustainability report, their data centers alone consumed 6.1 billion gallons of water in 2023, which is 17% more than the previous year, which they admit right there as being the same amount of water needed to irrigate roughly 41 golf courses annually, on average in the Southwestern United States. So it needs more water in other climates. And in regions where climate change is increasing water stress, you know, like California, where Google's HQ and a lot of Silicon Valley tech companies are located, well, they've been in a drought for the last two decades most of the time, and the water used for these data centers is starting to become a particular concern for these locations. A study by Cornell University predicts that AI globally could consume 4.2 to 6.6 billion cubic meters of water by 2027. That's nearly two thirds of England as a country's annual consumption. Now, based Basically, this all means that the impact of the tech industry on the whole is soaring, and not just through consuming energy and water, but generating carbon emissions. And unfortunately, we don't yet have standardized ways of measuring all of the emissions AI is responsible for, but we can get a really good sense of it by looking more microscopically at some of AI's major players. Going back to the big G here, Google's emissions have risen a whopping 48% in five years due to AI's energy demand, and it is absolutely tanking their energy efficiency at these data centers compared to their 2010 levels. According to their latest sustainability report, they saw a 13% year over year increase alone this last year, resulting in the total carbon footprint of 14 13.3 million metric tons of CO2. Now, considering they're only continuing to scale up their AI, it's really frightening to think about what that number is going to be for 2024 or 2025 or beyond that. And it kind of makes their whole achieve net zero emissions across all operations and value chain by 2030 pledge seem pretty improbable. Microsoft's latest sustainability report similarly reported that emissions grew by 29% since 2020 due to the construction of more data centers that are, quote, designed and 
optimized to support AI workloads. And don't worry, Meta, we're not leaving you out of discussion here. They are also sinking huge resources into AI to the tune of a $4.6 billion dollar increase to what they were already spending on AI. In 2023, the company disclosed its scope three emissions had increased by 65% in just two years. So that went from 5 million tons of CO2 in 2020 to 8.4 million tons of CO2 in 2022. And the craziest part is that was really before the major AI craze hit. It was kind of before everybody jumped on the bandwagon and my Instagram search feature starts getting me trying to ask meta AI instead of just finding the damn real I was looking for. So imagine what it is now. So basically all these tech companies that purport to have all these big noble climate goals and net zeros targets, it all pretty much means nothing if they're going to keep massively expanding their data centers and their AI powered engines that's using so much energy and pretty much counteracting anything positive they've actually done. But at least these big three are disclosing that information. ChatGPT maker OpenAI has yet to disclose the emissions and all. And sure, OpenAI uses Azure infrastructure to inference, train, and develop their engines, which has been carbon neutral since 2012. But if you've watched our video on carbon offsets, you'll know that there's a lot of greenwashing in this sphere and offsetting is not the silver bullet solution that they want us to think it is. So in response, a lot of these companies are scrambling for solutions. Google just purchased four gigawatts of clean energy generation capacity to help power their operations. And Microsoft just signed a 20 year agreement with the dormant Three Mile Island in Pennsylvania, which if you don't remember, it was the nuclear reactor site that suffered a partial meltdown in 1979 in one of the biggest industrial accidents in the country's history. And while nuclear energy doesn't create any greenhouse gas emissions, there's still issues of handling radioactive waste and building up uranium that is needed to power it. And that's actually not even the craziest thing that Microsoft is doing to find energy for their services. They also recently invested in nuclear fission technology through a company called Helium. And experts are calling this move pretty audacious. Why? Well, because right now that particular technology doesn't actually exist. It's still theoretical. Basically, Helion is developing a 40 foot device called a plasma accelerator that will heat fuel to 100 million degrees Celsius. Mind blowing. And then it's going to heat an isotope of hydrogen and helium three into plasma and then uses a pulsed magnetic field to compress the plasma until fusion happens. This just kind of goes to show how far some of these companies are willing to go to keep pushing AI. And I mean, they do have reasons behind it. So for instance, Microsoft's co-founder Bill Gates said last week that AI could help combat the climate crisis. So let's talk about whether it actually can or not. Well, his theory is that it can because big tech is seriously willing to pay extra to use clean energy sources. And yes, we have seen that they are. But the problem is, is that that's still not accounting for the fact that renewable systems are struggling to scale up to even these demands, let alone when those demands keep increasing. Some studies suggest that AI could reduce business energy consumption by 40% as well, and thus their carbon emissions by 90% compared to business as usual scenarios if we implement them by 2050. And that's gonna be through the implementation of things like energy saving AI in buildings, things that will turn off lights when you leave the room, more efficiently manage the heating and cooling systems, et cetera, et cetera. But just keep in mind that alone, that stat is misleading because it is just the emissions decrease in the buildings themselves and not accounting for the total net emissions that also factor in the emissions created through the energy demanded by those AI systems. So will the benefit outweigh the cost? We don't really know yet. On the whole, some say that the major climate benefit of AI lies in its potential to unlock insights that could help mitigate five to 10% of global greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 and to significantly bolster climate related adaptation and resilience initiatives. What does that mean? Well, one of the biggest areas of potential lies in its ability to more efficiently integrate vast amounts of renewable energy into existing power grids. See, the variability in renewable energy production often results in overproduction during some times and underproduction during other times, which leads to a lot of wasteful energy consumption and grid instability. So what AI can do is analyze vast data sets from weather patterns, energy consumption trends, all this stuff, and more accurately forecast those energy production needs. Unfortunately, AI or our renewable energy infrastructure for that matter, just isn't there yet. And right now it's environmental drawbacks still vastly outweigh the benefits. You may be thinking, should I go full at night and smash my phone? I mean, I wanna do that on a daily basis, but maybe that's just me. If you're not like me, there's no need to break out the hammers just yet. Or do, whatever, 
but a few people doing that unfortunately isn't going to tackle the AI energy problem. Because unfortunately, in my opinion, and the opinion of a lot of experts on the matter, AI likely isn't going anywhere. And again, we can't measure its impact on the whole yet, so it's really hard to fix something when you actually don't know the full scope of the problem. But it is a problem that researchers are addressing, and they're trying to design new specialized hardware, such as new accelerators, new 3D chips, which offer a much improved performance, and new chip cooling techniques, which will use up to 25 times less energy than current techniques. Alongside this, reducing overall data usage, including the issue of dark data, which is when data is generated and stored and then never used again, uh, moving towards shared data centers, using smaller scale task specific models, minimizing the frequency of AI training cycles, and shifting AI workloads to align with times of overall lower energy demand. So for instance, running tasks overnight or during cooler months, uh, so they don't have to use as much air conditioning and water to cool the servers. These are all things that experts say could lead to substantial energy savings. But the most important thing that we can do is to just be more discerning in our use of AI. I know it's shiny and new and fun right now, but really we don't need to be using it for everything that we currently are. In the words of Deepika Sandeep, an AI scientist at the Bengaluru-based clean energy generation company, not every problem demands a machine learning based solution. And I couldn't agree more. And it's something that we users can take to heart too. Can you ask Google that really simple question instead of querying chat GPT? Do you really need your virtual assistants to turn off the lights when a light switch exists right next to you. Basically what I'm getting at is just being mindful about when you engage with AI tech. It's about reducing the constant AI demand. Recently, for instance, I've noticed that my Gmail account has this little prompt at the top of every email that says, summarize this email. Like, can we not just read our own emails every more? <laughs> like, I mean, I hate answering emails as much as the next person, but come on. AI can certainly help us in our day-to-day -day lives, but it's really important that we keep in mind that we did all of these things before it existed. Even before Google, there was a time when we researched things by going to dig out the old encyclopedia and going to the library. And we've kind of just forgotten what it's like to have to do things a little bit more manually. And I think when it comes to AI, there's a really fine line between using it to improve our lives and letting dependency on it completely infantilize us. All told, AI is incredible. There's just no denying it. It can solve some of the world's biggest problems from healthcare issues to climate modeling however ironic that last one is. But that doesn't mean that we should just blindly accept it without criticizing the areas that it still vastly needs to improve in. And no, I'm not talking about response accuracy. In the words of AI researcher Alex Hanna, quote, there's a lot of people out there that talk about the existential risk around AI, about a rogue thing that somehow gets control of nuclear weapons or whatever. That's not the real existential risk. We have an existential crisis right now. It's called climate change and AI is palpably making it worse. End quote. Now over to you. What are your thoughts on AI? I know you have them because don't we all? Do you love it? Hate it? Find yourself prepping a basement full of food for the robot uprising? I'm kidding. Though I wouldn't actually blame you if you were stocking up to prepare for the worsening climate crisis that's going to wreak havoc on our food systems. Now, after you share those thoughts, be sure that you like this video and sign up for notifications on our channel so that you can stay up to date on all our latest content. Once more, I'm Amber from Sustainable Jungle and thank you so much for watching.